Hey everybody, this is Nat C. Jones here. Welcome to my channel and I'm so glad that you are here. Uh, today we are under the topic of faith and inspiration. We're going to talk about is God enough? Is he enough? So what brought up this topic was a conversation that I had with a very, very close friend of mine. She's almost like a sister. Well, she is like a sister. And uh, we were talking about this new trend of shadow journaling and a lot of other things that believers have gotten into that may or may not be good for us to do. She expressed to me that shadow journaling from her experience was like therapy and um, that she didn't think anything was wrong with it. Of course, there are some um, people who believe that shadow journaling is based in witchcraft and Wicca. And so I want to talk about it today. I want to talk about the tools that we use as believers to help us in our lives, those that are biblical, those that are not biblical. Um, everything in the Bible is for use for us for sure, but also there are things that are not in the Bible that are also useful, useful to us as human beings. And um, therapy is one of those. I believe in therapy. I don't think that every therapist is good for a believer. I believe that if you are a believer, your therapist probably should be a believer also because you're opening yourself up. You're opening your mind up, your subconscious up and many times um, to someone who you really have to trust, not just on an emotional and mental level, but also on a spiritual level. There are some therapists who practice things that are completely opposed to what the Bible teaches us. And um, they don't have to align with the Bible because they're not believers and they... they um, get ideas and practices from other religions, from the new age, from other cultures, and they're just trying things to see if they work and they're guinea pigging you. So you have to be careful who you choose to be a therapist, uh, to be your therapist. Do some research, talk to other believers who have used therapists, see who's worked for them, but don't just jump, don't just Google and jump in somebody's office and jump onto their chair and open up your heart and mind to them. Everyone can't be trusted. Uh, but, so anyway, we know that this walk with Christ, is this is a relationship. So as you are working out your salvation, your relationship with God is key. Your ability to communicate with God and Him communicate back to you and you understand what he's saying and being able to differentiate his voice from your own thoughts that is paramount in your relationship with God so I will never tell someone whether they should do um, therapy or not or use a tool or not if I'm not sure it's something that um, the Bible condemns but we just want to be careful what I want to talk about today is is God enough for us is it quite possible that everything that we need is found in the Word of God and found in our relationship with God? I'm a believer that that is the case. Now, if you want to do therapy, do therapy. I think it's cool. Um, but I also know that everything that we need... Really? I'm not going to that meeting. I'm sorry. I know that everything we need is in Him because we are spirits first. And everything packed on top of that, he can handle. So let's go to the word. I've been in 2 Corinthians lately. I don't know why, but it's really been on my heart. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Here's the thing. We are in a society that does not glamorize weakness. Everybody has to act like they've got it all together. They don't have any problems. People are wearing masks. Nobody's being real. It's just, you know, everybody's the baddest of the baddest, you know, and we're all trying to outshine each other. Uh, but in the kingdom, things are different than in the world. We're supposed to think differently and operate differently than the world. And everything that we need is in God. And so he's saying in this scripture, I want you to be weak. I remember when me and my husband first got married and I was going to counseling. It was a Christian um, counselor for married couples. And me and my husband were going through some things. He didn't want to go to the council. I was like, well, I'm going without you. And I went. 
And I'm glad I did. One of the counselors, she called me and she told me, the Holy Spirit told me to tell you that he doesn't need you to be strong. And I was like, what? She said, he does not need you to be strong. He wants you to be weak. And that, you don't understand, that didn't even compute in my African-American strong woman. Uh, and the women in my family are so strong. Like, it didn't make sense to me at all. And so I had to do what was called going counterintuitive, which means I'm going to have to open my mind up to something that's the opposite of my default. What is it? What do you mean, be weak? That almost seemed blasphemous. Like, what? And I remember calling my mom, and she was like, mm, that didn't make me feel good when I heard that. But if God said it, you know, dig into it. And it was based on this scripture. She didn't give me the scripture. She just said, God doesn't need you to be strong. Wow. Do you see how the kingdom is completely different from the world? What we value in the kingdom is completely different from the world. The God values your weakness. I read, I have a devotional that I do called Jesus Calling. This is great for intimacy and relationship with God. One of these devotionals one day said, and it's as if, if, as if Jesus is writing a letter to you. It said, I am not repelled by your weakness. When I heard that, I just broke because I thought weakness was a bad thing. I thought, I mean, we spend so much of our time hiding our weaknesses just for mere survival out here in the real world. And God is saying, you don't have to hide your weakness from you. I, my strength is made perfect in your weakness, which really just talks about depending fully on me. Stop acting like you got it. You ain't got it. You don't have it all together. You struggling. I need you to acknowledge your weakness and depend completely on me. Whew. That takes a different mindset as an adult. We worked all this time to be an adult, to do what we want to do, stand on our own two feet, and God is saying, no, I want your weakness, and I want you to depend completely on me. Not only that, Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So not only is my is his strength made perfect in our weakness, but he will supply our every need. So you're trying to go and get your own thing. You're trying to do your own thing. You're trying to be an independent woman or an independent man to prove that you can do it all. And he's saying, I will supply every need that you have. Every need. Don't try to change that word. Every means every. Every need that you have. Financial, spiritual, emotional, physical. Every need that you have, he will supply according to his riches. And riches are not just, riches basically define resources, assets. And that's not just financial. It includes, it includes financial, but it's not just financial. I'm like, my goodness. Then 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound you. Abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. What? Let's do that again. God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. It sounds to me like God has everything we need. So how come... So many believers act like God is not enough. I need an add-on. You ever had a program and you try to use one feature and it says you have to go buy an add-on? I hate when that happens because when I'm working, I don't want to stop. I'm trying to get some stuff done. Don't make me go download something, right? Why are we trying to add on to God? Why are we adding on? Now, to me, this is what I believe. If you feel like you have to add something to God, that means to me you just really have not gone deep enough in him. My husband gets on me all the time because I like to order technology, but I do not like to read directions. And <laughs> I don't like I don't like to um, explore features. I just, if I order the latest phone, I'm going to pick it up, I'm going to text, I'm going to call, and that's it. 
So my husband's more techie, so he'll be like, did you know your phone can do this? Did you know your phone can do that? You're going to buy a tape measure. Did you know you could do this? You're, going to, you're trying to make that picture level. Did you know in this app on your phone, you could just sit it up and it'll measure to see if the picture's level? I did not explore all the features that my phone had, so I was about to go and buy more that I didn't even need. Do you see where I'm going with this? God doesn't need an add-on. You need to explore the features of the kingdom. You need to go deeper. You need to take the time. Get into the word and find out what the benefits are to this walk with Christ. There are limitless benefits to it. And if you go deeper, I promise you, you, were not, you will not look for an add-on. You will not look for anything extra. Don't go outside before you go deep. So... This is really what I wanted to share with you today. Um, I am on this journey where I want to go deeper in God. I want all of the benefits that come along with having a heavenly father who has limitless resources, who is the source, who has everything that I need. If I can't find it, it's I'm not looking hard enough. There's something that I need from him and I have not done what I need to do to get it because it's there. Everything that we need is in him. Every healing of every broken place, every um, piece of, bit of lack that needs to be fulfilled, it's all in him. It's right there in front of our faces. Give you another example. My child, my children are a little bit spoiled when it comes to food. They will come home, food is packed out in the pantry, in the refrigerator. We have food falling out of the refrigerator. We have so much food because I eat. Okay, me and my family, we don't play about food, right? They will come home and say, there's nothing to eat. I'm like, have you even attempted to look in the refrigerator? Can we order pizza? I'm not ordering pizza. We got a frozen pizza in there. We got sandwich meat. We got all kind of stuff. I'm not ordering pizza. We don't need that because what we need is already in there. If you're hungry, you don't have to wait an hour for me to order something there's something already in the house. Ooh, it's already in him. It's in him. You don't have to go outside. It's there. So my prayer is that when you have a need and you have an urge to seek help outside of the will of God, you have the urge to seek assistance outside of the word of God and the kingdom of God, that God will bring you back around to first base and say, I have everything that you need and reveal to you and show you in that moment in real time that whatever it is that you need is in the house. By in the house, it's in God's house. It's in the kingdom. It's in his hands. Everything, everything and, and all, all and everything is in him. I hope this blessed you and I hope you have a wonderful day. See you next time. Bye.